your friend. In the white shirt. What's his name? Right, you But the strength and the confidence that he has, I would love him to come up now. His name is Justin Gordon. Um, can you on Five, four, four. Justin Gordon, uh, author. Uh, motivational speaker, mentor, and storyteller. So everybody give it up to Justin Gordon. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't choose uh, the mentor, motivational speaker one. Uh, I, I, got, I, I got a really fun rapper I like to listen to. I think dude is really nice. Maybe a young boy, he got a song, I am who they say I am. Hey, hey, hey. Y'all ever heard that? Y'all know NBA Young Boy? Yeah. All I need is one. All I need is one. And I'm moving up. Thank you, brother. I know. Google it. But no. Um, I say I say that to say sometimes you live a life. Sometimes you lead a life and you your soul. And so if somebody else, you know, if somebody say, you know, say you something and uh, that's that's as positive as that, then that's a blessing. So so uh, with that, I like to tell y'all, you know, how I even got here. First of all, I'm so happy. Proud of you, brother, uh, uh, Mr. Mike Bradford, man. I, that's just being here really uh, explains everything about my life that I would like to do. Uh, when I was at Oakland Community College, I'm, I'm gonna just start it like this, but then I'm gonna get back because I actually got some levels. I want to tell y'all the confidence. We're gonna talk about some levels to this. Meek Mill dropped the album. He didn't went to prison. He didn't came back. Album hot. It's levels. Y'all remember that song? Levels. It's levels. We're gonna talk about the levels. We're gonna talk about Mr. Mike Bradford and what they gotta do with confidence. So I went to OCC when I had nothing. I was I was facing 15 years in prison uh, uh, for 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 arrogance. We're gonna talk about that. so some of the, some of the levels we're gonna get out of. That. I went to OCC as a, as a refuge. I found a home. I found a brothership. That's not a word. <laughs> hey, look, I'm y'all know I feel everything I'm saying. I just said brothership, and nobody caught it. That's how y'all know I'm really serious about what I'm about to talk about to y'all. Because I'm damn, you feel me? Thank y'all. And y'all, I thank y'all for being with me. I just said brothership. We're going to move on. Confidence. You got to have confidence and move on. I just said brothership. <laughs> got to have confidence. Look, we had an organization called Man Up. And uh, I happen to be the president and the vice president. And, 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 and Mike Bradford was, was an integral part of the group. And so I had a chance to meet with this man and build with him and learn with him and talk to him. And, and, and do activities and grow with him. And I left, I went on. And for him now to have an organization and be the president of his own organization, that's, that's that reciprocity. That's that circle. That's that circle that we all look for, you know, because I feel like I've done something right. So, because it's confidence, we can talk about what we've done. A part of having confidence, hey, oh my God. We got stars in the building. <laughs> that's, that's a part of confidence. A part of confidence is to acknowledge what you've done right. And I think a lot of times we can criticize ourselves. You gotta acknowledge what you've done right. So, I know I did the right thing about befriending and loving on Mike Bradford. So I want to give a shout out and a hat to Mike Brett for all the stuff. Hey, I'm going to do that. I fight for the right to be a kid. I battle you for my childish fits. I fight you for the access to my optimism. Why we cherish freedom more when we in prison? Why we wish to be grown when we was young? Why we want to start over right when we done? Why do white people really want to be black? Why black people don't know the answer to that? Why we get mad at little kids for asking questions? Why they say, shh, don't challenge the referee? Why they caution you when you tell them your goals? You really know what it means to sell your soul? I fight for the right to be ignorant. Ignorant to the maybe's weights and what ifs. I battle for my illogical, unreasonable confidence of this world. I won't fight you for your consciousness. All right, all right, all right. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. This is what we're going to do about it. This is what we're going to talk about. And that's why I did this poem. This poem right here is available at Six Mile Beach. It's on the honor roll of mission. That's a poetry book I wrote. The reason why I wrote this book is because people in my neighborhood are like me. I'm from Six Mile. I'm from the west side of Six Mile. And I ain't never met nobody from my little who wrote a book. I want to bring some tangible back. I went to school too. I went to Michigan. I graduated. I didn't want to just bring back a piece of paper. I brought back, I, I want to bring back something tangible, somebody something can hold. 
So that's why I wrote this book, and that's where that poem is from. And, and when Mr. Bradford invited me, I wanted to explain, talk about confidence, because I got a lot of it, but I've been through a lot to get a whole lot of it. And God gave me a whole lot of it, but I had to manage it. True. You got to manage it. You can have confidence and turn it here, which we're going to start right now. I have to put my phone on. Look, anybody know me, I don't perform with no phone. But I'm talking in front of a I'm talking in my city, you know? So I got to make sure I hate everything. My youth. I had a whole lot of times. I knew I was cute when I was a little boy. I knew I could speak because my people's always, they made me read. They made me read magazines. They told me that I was going to be somebody. You know, they might call me dumb and stupid, but they, they encouraged me for a lot of times. So I had confidence. I had to thank God for that. That's the time I had. I had, I had, I mean, I had, I had situations, you know, we, we didn't have this, or we didn't have that, and then, and then this person leaves, and that person leaves, but I had confidence, and I had, I had enough to, to know, to know the blessings that God gave me, and I used them for the wrong reasons, I used them, I used them to my advantage, I understand what the world wanted, I understand the world, the world like Tough guys. When you when you were black, when you black in Detroit, when you you know when you in that when you when you want to be cool, you want to get girls, you want to seem to be cool, you want to be on the block and people don't mess with you, you act a certain way. And so I knew I wasn't the biggest dude, I wasn't the strongest dude, so I ran my mouth. And I knew I, I and, and but then again I was never uh, uh, soft at all for a fault. But my comp, my I used my confidence not for good, but to really try to establish myself when I could have been, but because. I didn't want to appear to be the smart guy because the smart guy wasn't popular. I wasn't confident enough to be the smart guy. But I knew I had the, I knew I had the components to be confident, but I used them for arrogance instead. Y'all feel what I'm saying? You see, you see I, I, I those, a lot of times we misconstrue them. It's about how you use it because the gifts is there. So I used it for arrogant means. That led, that led, that led me to making decisions that facing 15 years of prison and taking away my freedom, being kicked out of school, all because I was trying to impress people, which leads to insecurity. Even if you're not here, even if you're not here, it's the wrong way. But sometimes I would use my mouth to try to talk to, talk to girls. You know, like, I, I, I would want to do that, or I would use my beauty or whatever, whatever my charisma or my ambition, I would use these tools that make people confident, but the wrong way, in the area. And finally, once I broke out of that, there was a point where I can say I'm, I'm broken out of it. I, I love myself enough. I don't have to be arrogant. But if you really want to be a confident person, you don't battle arrogance. Because that's what because this world is a dark place. It's beautiful, it's definitely more love than hate in the world, but just you know, it's because confident, when you see a confident person, especially a young black person, where are you a young person, period, a young person without trust, if you don't have money and you dare to be confident in the United States, they say, oh, you're too loud, or you angry, or you or you catty. Or you mad, or you too, you too, they, they try to they try to suppress you down when you show them who you really are. So arrogance make it, it can be misconstrued because you you so you want to fight them to show them that no, I just really love myself. So don't don't misconstrue it. But insecurity is another level, that's another level of confidence. I went through that a lot too. Insecurity is like I'm in my job. My job going good. My boss like me, I'm doing three, five days in a row. I'm hitting my parts, I'm hitting my mic, I'm hitting my mic, I'm hitting my parts, I'm doing it. Oh, you sweet, Jay, you sweet. Bad guy, ah, I'm good, yes. Oh, yes, I my coworkers. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, bad, I'm good, you know. Or somebody that even, even matters even more, like a uncle. I remember I was 18 years old. I was, uh, damn, I just got kicked out of the Southfield Lake Group. I just got kicked, I was in Oak Park Alternative School. I finally wanted to change my life. I was like, all right, I'm about to be a writer. I'm about to be a filmmaker. This is what I'm about to do. This is the work I want to do. I knew I was good. I knew I could write. I was out with my uncle. My uncle was one of the patriarchs of my family on my, uh, on my mother's side. He worked in GM his whole life, 30 years. I told him I wanted to be a filmmaker. He said, you'll never make money doing that. He said, don't ever, don't, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. Don't ever try to do that. Like, 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 for what? Like, you know, that's not, but because of the environment, he wasn't, he loved me. Of course he wouldn't tell me to hurt me. That's the environment that he grew up in. You no, know, you know, this Detroit, you know, dope or car. Big one, you know, you're trying to get some money, you know. And of course, that's not of course. That's a generalization. I digress. It took me four years. It took me years to, to, to get back from that. Because I was still hung up on what people thought, what people had to say. That's my uncle. I know he loved me. He had money. He wanted to see me win. But he couldn't understand it from my perspective. So that insecurity, 
and insecure. And, 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 but that is, and that, that, that turns into what I'm going to talk about next. But I'm going to stay on insecurity because, like I said, you can be doing sweet at your job and everybody telling you sweet, but the moment you fall off for two days when you get sick, then you, you whack. Then are you going to think you whack? You were just sweet a week ago. You got to pick one. You can't choose sides. On yourself, if you good, you good. That's why I said always with a shooter. Now, if you ever, if, if you ain't know about basketball, I'm going to use a very basic basketball analogy. Even if you never played it, you shoot basketballs, right? You shoot them. You know, you, you, it's okay. If you make, if you make, if you, you start shooting them and you miss two. That's the difference between a confident person and an insecure person. But that might just be here. That's the difference. Because any, if you have confidence, that third shot, I don't care if you miss the last 30, you always expect for it to go in. But that's not Mr. Screw that with here. Because some people are say, oh, I'm guaranteeing this win. I'm guaranteeing this shot goes in. It's not here. It's not, it's not insecure because you know you've been training for this long. Especially if you've been practicing these jump shots. If you miss 30, you know that's why Steph Curry wins. He can miss a whole bunch, but, but, but when he goes up, he, no matter when he goes up for a shot, he expects it to go in. And not because of arrogance. It's a God for this. It's a God for this. And that's when it got for God for this. Because we don't have control. It's a, it's a big thing to be confident in this world, when you, in a world we don't have control. That's what I want to talk about. I had accomplished my dreams. I thought I graduated from school despite having a felony on my record. Five years probation. Three months of jail. I got kicked out of University of Michigan to get my scholarship back. I'm done. We got some more time. Oh, no, that wasn't time. Okay. We're, this is my last point. I, I thought I'd still achieve my dreams over everything. Because even when you got confidence, you just still got to know how to manage it through, through, throughout. Because throughout, God gave me tribulations. So I got kicked out of school. I went to jail. I got out everything. I graduated just in April. I dropped the book. I thought I was hot. I was a man. I applied to the NFL. I was a wild dream. You just, like the NFL uh, to be a film director, like to shoot movies. I was going to pull my own wrong, not in like an area where it's like, hey, what's up, baby? I'm making 60 G's next year. We can go on a vacation. <laughs> you know? I was ready to do that. I was ready. I was ready. I, I went through the, I, I, I even risked my freedom. I, I went to New Jersey. I wasn't supposed to. I'm talking too much. I don't even care. Because that's the statute of limitations, whatever, I don't even care. <laughs> it don't matter. I went there, I went through three job process interviews. I beat people from Duke, USC, Iowa. For some reason, they wanted me. I went, I, and and I, I, I worked and I got the job. I sent, they sent up a contract. I'm thinking it's a dream. Like, I'm on. Y'all know the term, like, to be on? Yeah. I was on. I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to Like, yeah, you know, like, we did it. So I knew from there I was going to be able to create my own lane, you know? Then I had the confidence. I'm not the confidence to take the job. I had the confidence to go try to go out to the job. Once I got the job, the HR came back to me and said, thought you had a felony. Go home. No. You can't be here. What? You got you you black and you for Detroit and you got a felony? Ah, we can't have that. Ironically at the NFL. Ironically. At that moment, I was depressed. I, yeah, I was, it's natural, it's okay. But at that moment, that's where that God for this came in. I had to understand. That I was still going to be there. If I, would, if I had no faith in God, then that was the time to give up. That was, that was the time. You know? I mean, like, then, this, was, this was the time. But instead, I had the God for this. And I'm going to say, I don't, I don't talk about, I don't like to talk about what I do. You know? Uh, but I had the God to start my own company at this point. So now, I'm seven months since graduation. I, got on, I run a company. You know? And this, my, my family helped me do this. Look at Jackson 3. You know, so we all got this <laughs> you, all, you know, like this, we, you know, we can be serious about it because I said, you know, I didn't want to give up because that would be injustice to my confidence. That would be injustice to, to, to that scripture that we put on Hebrew that inspired me to talk to y'all and write out my scripture there. So now I'm still going for it. We in the process right now. And I know what's going to happen. That's why I said when I put my shoot my shot because I know I'm living my life right. You know, close it. That's, that that God thinks. That God thinks. That God thinks to do it. Even when you can't see, you know, the faith, they say faith without works is dead. That means faith with works is what? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> hey, man. I'm going to check on your teachers, man. And when you're faith, man, you know, you get them all, man. No, um, no, thank you very, no, thank you very much. Like I said, I, 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 I wrote down my situation. I, I, I wanted to make sure I got, I got with y'all the levels to it. Don't, don't want to say confidence with arrogance. And then when you see it's insecurity, that's an invitation to grow. And, it's, and, it's ulti and ultimately, it's the confidence. It's the confidence to know you got the skills so much to where you know the situation is not for you. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Hey.
You feel me? When you know it's, when you when, when you know you can destroy something, when you choose not to, you, you know you can you know you can do it. If somebody try you, I'm gonna leave you with this. This is this is God finish right here. I'm gonna this is my last story, Mr. Rapper. Because I know you're killing me. This is God finish right here. I'm gonna tell you, it's not even about like it's my uncle. My uncle told me you're a little boy. I, I, I look at it as a, a hood hero. My uncle said he had the L. George Coney Island on six mile shape. Walk in, wait for the slurp. You know, he like me, daddy said we smooth. Ladies love us. The people in my family, that's how we do. You know, we back and forth. Woo, woo, woo. We talking. I got next to him, get a little hot jealous. He like the way too. So we get to, you know, big man. He want, he want to show, he want, he, he want to show he bigger. Hey, you know, acting tough. You know, basically want to just like, you know, pump my uncle. You know, uh, different uncle. Then the two uncle told me I never met different uncle. Well, you know, you know how the trade is. You know, everybody like, okay, whatever. Like, so, uh, uh, and so, and so, and so, and so, and so, and so, my, uh, yeah. uh, so my, so my uncle was like, you know, he, uh, he saw the situation, he was like, all right, baby girl, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, get up out of here. You know, he decided he left, left the situation. You know, he, uh, he left. You know, the girl was like, you know, it wasn't no big deal, he, you know, he left. You know, the dude, the dude, he said the dude was really like, some people would die for, to, to over, trying to chase that, you feel me? And so I asked him, you know, I'm a legend, you know, I got a lot of testosterone, I play basketball, I do my push-ups at night at this point. I don't feel any, but you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, damn, what's the game? Won't let him play you like that, huh? What's going on? What's gonna let him play you? He said, nephew, I had a 40 on my head. I would've, I would've blew his face in for what? I would've hit it, you know? I had to understand, I would've ended his life. Cause he tried to embarrass me, humiliate me in the Coney Island. That's, that's the type of God in, in certain situations. Cause sometimes life's gonna press you like that and you're gonna have the power to do something to somebody or to something. In all situations, at all levels, men and women, we all gonna have, we're gonna, we're gonna have somebody like this. But you gotta have that God face to say, I'm not, I'm done, I'm done. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>